What's going on, Soul Nation? Ginger Prime here, and Chris from work to game is joining me because there's unbelievable breaking news in terms of Xbox and Cinemax, aka Bethesda, aka id, aka Doom, aka ESO, and more. And you can guarantee that these things are going to be brought into Game Pass on uh, Microsoft's biggest acquisition. Uh, video game acquisition ever at $7.5 billion. The last one, the last biggest one that makes headlines, Minecraft at $2.4 billion. You wonder if Minecraft does Still crushing right. it for one game. <laughs> yeah, two, one, one game for Minecraft. Well, yeah, and then they have the Minecraft universe. Chris, what's your first takeaway? Like, this is breaking news as we are sitting down to record this right now. Uh, the deal has... Uh, some sources say gone through. Some sources say, like, at least Bethesda is now wholly owned by Microsoft and the Zenimax pieces being hammered out and tinkered with what are your thoughts man i mean regardless of how this shakes out regardless of if they have to let a few titles go um regardless of if for some reason they don't end up owning all of the rights to like the the playstation 5 exclusive games or things like that because it's super interesting to think about xbox owning ps5 exclusives um especially in a world where we don't have that many ps5 exclusives confirmed yet right so like to see microsoft own a substantial market share in that space is fascinating um i i don't see how xbox game pass is not the best value proposition in all of gaming yeah like i don't see anything better um outside of steam coming out with a subscription that lets you play all of steam i don't see how anybody could even compete with what game pass is becoming it, it just and and the one thing for us you and me over on work to game we play a lot of 14 we've played you know some we play a lot of mmos at game pass hasn't really had mmos within it that's that's been one of the genres missing jrpgs fighting games there's been these areas where it doesn't yeah own a lot this adds a bunch of that like this but this it more importantly shows that they're desiring to add more this isn't stop. just mmos though this is still doom this is still all of like id all of bethesda like even games that aren't released and here's the real kicker QuakeCon is owned by microsoft basically now. hey and QuakeCon's in our backyard <laughs> hey microsoft well, we'd love to say hi whenever this COVID uh. thing ends um <laughs> beyond beyond that though it's that when you think about uh fantasy star online i was telling this to you while we were live streaming Fantasy Star Online 2 was brought over to the West by Microsoft. And everybody's like, well, you know, Sony could have done that. Yeah, they could. They didn't. Um, but Microsoft already saw New Genesis. They already knew what was on the horizon. This mm -hmm. is not just an acquisition for the IP as it exists today. Because look at Fallout. Fallout definitely has fallen in favor. Uh, you know, and that's just a lot on the back of Satan Howard and the mistakes that Bethesda has made. This could be a good way that they could kind of go in and, well, you know, kind of right in the shop. They've got the IPs now. They have those games automatically all ad added into uh, Game Pass itself, continually to add that value and becoming a juggernaut in terms of what Game Pass really is. We saw with the PS5 reveal that with uh, they're bringing in PS Plus collection. Uh, so Sony is starting to sit here and say, let's bundle some of these really big titles, uh, PS Plus collection, focusing in on PS4 games. But let's bundle those. And I think that's a really good move because one of the things that needs to happen, in my opinion, is I believe competition ha has gamers win. If Microsoft goes and just acquires all of this stuff and there's only one service if you can only pick netflix you didn't have the option to do disney plus or hulu like netflix could do a couple of things and they would because they're a business and you shouldn't their think price get lazy on originals exactly but competition is going to keep them hungry keep them investing one of people well uh, one of the number one things i see commonly brought up and we actually had this in a tweet storm over over the weekend saying how that uh they believe that game pass is like is going to disservice the developers the way that it does not disservice developers developers is there's a competitor to, to the game pass so the dev can say my price isn't this my price is this now because i have either sony or google or amazon like everybody's trying to compete for essentially what that product is oh my gosh like when we think of the future like remember when they announced starfield we don't know what that game is but i would <laughs> venture to bet that if it still exists starfield is now going to be a day one game pass game and if it looks right. and, and plays amazingly well, if they kind of fix this, the, the reputation after Fallout 76, who knows? Maybe this fixes Fallout 76. Maybe they're like, let's go in and let's invest in that, get that up and running. And now here's Fallout 5. Now here's what people have been clamoring for. 23 studios, man. 23 studios now. 
when Microsoft added EA to Game Pass la like last week or two weeks ago, I read that. And I even posted on that. You can go check out the video. I'm saying, I don't think this is their big announcement. I don't think they're done with these kind of announcements. And so with this bundle, the question to the community, the question to you, Chris, is... Like, are they done? Is this the big kind of thing before we go into Series X? And what if not, what are they still missing as a part of their library? So Polygon quoted Spencer saying that this acquisition marked a landmark. So this clearly marks a chapter for him. This may be the last major acquisition going into the next generation. So this may kind of conclude this chapter, this generation, which I think was a rebuilding year for them. Uh, this generation, Xbox One did a lot well, but it, in every metric, it pretty much got crushed mm -hmm. by PlayStation 4. Yeah. But... I think one of the things that I admire about it is PlayStation 4 felt very clinical to me. Um, there were a couple very passionate titles, things like God of War and stuff, where there was a studio that did something incredible, and then I attribute it to the PlayStation universe. But I think, you know, Spider-Man did something incredible, but Xbox itself has felt passionate this generation. Mm -hmm. It's felt like they're, they're Hungry. just trying to make things better for gamers. And, I, and it may just be that they're hungry. It may be that PlayStation would have done the same thing had they not been on top. Um, but I, I think for me, this, this is kind of everything coming to bear, right? They've worked very hard this entire generation to set up something incredible for gamers. This, this, I, my one X can play these games. Mm -hmm. My game pass just got better. Even if I don't buy an S and an X, this whole, like, I don't necessarily need all of your money today. I just want to make you happy and keep you as part of my family and like that's what it feels like and it feels like this is just one more step in that direction this is one more step in why if game pass has 10 games that i want to play and i don't have time for why would i go buy an 11th right so and what so is missing what is what is the what is the relationship that's missing i personally have long believed it's the jrpg and it's the fact that microsoft has still historically struggled in japan and i would argue my hope is like when you think of like the the companies out in Japan that I wouldn't mind being brought in with the caveat that I don't think Microsoft should limit PlayStation players from these games. I think that is an old way of thinking. And I know PlayStation's playing that game. And I think the reason they're playing their game is because right now they see the writing on the wall and they see that Microsoft over this last generation has already got a running start. Thus, PS Plus Collection. It's a good move. I'm glad Sony's doing it. But you think Konami, you think Capcom, you think Sega, you think the relationship Microsoft's been building in Japan quietly, and now they're starting to bring Fantasy Star here, you know, things like that. I honestly would be, uh, would what love... What if xCloud powers Nintendo? That would be, uh, it's it's either going to be xCloud or it's going to be uh, Google. We don't know what Amazon's got up their sleeve, but I think you're, the reason why you have Nintendo so quiet uh, is I don't know if that means that Nintendo is going to come into those ecosystems, but I think you could see Nintendo being powered, like you said, powered by one of these platforms. And I would yep. bet that uh, that uh, the CEO of Microsoft says, "Don't lose that. If you want to be gaming focused, you know, even if you have to pay additional for Nintendo, just like you do with Disney Plus, like I would do that. Yep. I would Nintendo do Plus that. powered by XCloud. Exactly, It'll be its own subscription, its own thing. But they're they're the backer. Yeah. Just one more place to put their finger. Um, I so I would zoom out further. Okay. I would zoom out back to the statement that that PlayStation and Nintendo are not our competitors. Okay. Google, Amazon, Apple, right? Those are the kind of companies. I would say that what Game Pass is missing at this point is the things that you're seeing the mobile companies move to, Verizon, AT&T, that partnership with a bigger range of the word media. Okay. I would say the next thing for me is for Game Pass to tie directly into a reduced subscription on HBO Max, Netflix, Hulu, something like that. I would start to say the console is the center of my home. I pay this Game Pass thing for $25, $35 a month, and it encompasses a whole entertainment package. That's the thing that I feel like, honestly, that would have felt like they were swinging too far five years ago. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, kind of behind. Like, that won't even surprise yeah. me. Last question, because I know we both have work to do today. This kind of came up. Um, Pre-orders go live tomorrow for Xbox Series X. Like this is such an incredible announcement going into that where I think this could, in my opinion, move somebody who's maybe a fan of those games, that needle to say, oh, I am now going, I, I wasn't able to pre-order PS5. I'm now going to pre-order a Series X or a Series S. I think this moves the needle. I think it does. I and if you're a PC it's gamer- sell out regardless. Well, not to sell out. I'm <laughs> saying to when somebody who can't get 
Uh, let's and assume because one one of the things Microsoft's been tweeting is that we think you're going to be fine. Like they they tweeted that out when someone's like, I'm I'm worried about pre-orders, and they're like, we think you. I think we. Well, they also covered. they also threw some shade at PlayStation saying we're going to make it very clear what time yeah. orders go live. Um, I, I will say some retailers handled the PlayStation Five launch better than others, so. Mm -hmm. it, Target yes, seems to be the clearest. The I'm very interested. If you already have an Xbox today, the nice thing is you don't have to commit. You don't. I'm going to stay on my One X. I can wait for the Halo Infinite bundle. I can wait for it to go on sale. I yeah. can wait for me to have another Trump check. <laughs> it, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. I don't have to buy tomorrow. It's a choice. Yeah, which is awesome. Thank you, Chris, for uh, for coming in, and I wanted to talk about this, and this is just massive, massive news. Um, guys, be sure to check us out over at Work to Game. We've got a couple of videos, a big one uh, this week uh, weekend. So if you guys aren't following Work to Game, link will be in the top description. Follow us on Twitch for some of our real time holy crap reactions. Not necessarily for, uh, family friendly, but it is what it is. Uh, without that, without further ado, for Ginger Prime, what's up, Soul Nation? Thanks for tuning in this video. Love you, faces, and I'll see you next time. This video is sponsored by me, Ginger Prime. Hopefully you'll check out my podcast channel, Ginger Gaming Radio, which we have lots of guests, lots of great conversations, and even more highlights. Links are in the description below. Let me know what you think. Thanks.